Hi, I'm Sean Watson, Director of Sales Operations and Special Projects here at Trend Hunter. Today, we're going to be talking about hyperconvenience and how brands are acting on convenience to enable consumers to do more. Throughout this course, we're going to take a look at the changing face of convenience and what cues brands should action on to create products and solutions that align with the new wave of convenience. Consumers are busy. They're overwhelmed. They don't have time to work out, be curious, pick up a fourth habit, or trim their bonsai. We consume an ungodly amount of media, and we find more and more there isn't a dividing line between busy time and free time. It all seems to blend together. Even on vacation, sometimes it feels like vacation is actually getting in the way of things we want to achieve. In fact, Glassdoor reports only 23% of employees take their full vacation time. And how many have asked yourself, do I have time to take a vacation? It's almost like vacation is getting in the way of our lives. Further on to that, when we do go on vacation, 61% of us are working anyway, putting out fires or checking that urgent email. To add to that, we're in the midst of this technological tidal wave that only continues to crest. We hear a lot about dwindling attention spans. We've seen, you know, the average internet user's attention span go from 12 seconds to 8 seconds. You've probably heard the stats. We actually have a second less attention span than a goldfish. Some reports even suggest that this is going to accelerate and we'll see an 88% decrease in attention span each year. So we're busy. It's even harder to get people's attention in the internet age, and convenience is a word that has become synonymous with new technology. But the prevailing thought has always been, how can we save people time, or give them back more time? That's driven the conversation around convenience for such a long time, and it's generally pushing into strange categories. In the technological age, for many consumers, the question isn't necessarily about more time, but how we can enable them to do more. And I'll give you a few examples of what I mean. In the world of media, in the digital age, this idea of saving time took form of customized cord cutting. The idea was to personalize content for convenient consumption, but really, it took away the magic of finding new off-the-beaten-path content that just couldn't be curated. The convenience revolution was really based on this idea of contextual availability, its most basic format, making products available right when they might be needed. Again, that idea of saving time versus allowing the consumer to do more. While an idea of accessible retail can fuel fun marketing ploys like the pop-up revolution featuring things like pop-up retail carts and treehouse pop-ups meant to improve consumer accessibility, this approach, in its extreme, could have you really testing that IP87 waterproof claim on your newest phone, like at the underwater mobile store in Dubai, or buying your spaghetti meat in between subway stops for tonight's dinner. Just don't tell the kids where you got it. So when you look around and you ask yourself, what are the most convenient services and apps out there? There are some well-known examples. And while no one would argue that these services are convenient, they aren't really time savers. In fact, they're probably more time wasters. I mean, think about it. Before Netflix, uh, could you remember a time where you binged more than eight hours on a TV show? Before Tinder, uh, can you remember a time you spent so much time actively evaluating other people? Before Amazon, I prided myself on buying all my Christmas gifts a week before Christmas, hunting like Indiana Jones for that perfect Lego set and in and out in about 20 minutes. Now, I'm ordering things just to make Instagram pics. And, of course, Uber. If I had to take a taxi somewhere in real life, I probably just wouldn't go. What makes these services actually convenient is that they follow the six cues of convenience. Number one, accessibility convenience. How easy is it to access the product, to get your hands on it and become familiar? Secondly, transactional. Once it's accessed, how easy it is to purchase? Are there barriers that take effort to acquire? Next. Usability. And this speaks to whether or not the product is easy to use, beyond a simple GUI, does it feel familiar? And enjoyment is about whether or not it's actually fun to interact with. Addiction convenience is an interesting one. Does the product make your customer want to use it over and over again to improve or monitor a score, for example? And finally, lifestyle convenience. Today's consumer sees everything as part of a personal brand, and how does your product or service fit into that? We're going to use Uber as a case study to see how they align with the six cues of convenience. The app, of course, is free, and as long as you have a phone and payment option, it's available. Payment is easy because once you put in your credit card info, you never have to look at it again. I constantly forget to switch over to my personal Uber for my business Uber. Usability is great it's because it's familiar. You're used to Google Maps and GPS, so the interface for Uber is something that you've come to recognize. And the experience itself is customizable. You can play your own music in the car, ask to be left alone. And it's gamified through scoring for both drivers and riders, which makes people want to get better and better scores and compare their scores to their peers. And they're expanding into other parts of the consumer's life, like local food with Uber Eats and even Uber Pets. These six cues of convenience have become integral when trying to align with the new wave of convenience for consumers around the world. 